Hi, this is Shop Talk and I'm Ria Tanwat Cotrillo. Manila Fame is staging its 55th exhibition next week, March 14th to the 16th. And the organizers are excited about this expo, which is definitely bigger and better, especially in terms of design. And to tell us more about the upcoming expo at the SMX Convention Center is Saitam's Deputy Executive Director, Ria Matute. Also with us in the segment is fashion designer to the stars, <laughs> JC Buendia. Hi, Ria and JC. Thanks for coming Hi. on the show. Hi. Okay, Ria, let's let's start with you. Um, Fifty-five years of <coughs> um, of fame, and every year we're trying to make it better and better. And this year is really going to focus a lot on design and fashion. Yeah. Well, it's the it's the fifty-fifth edition. Um, we're basically underlining the Manila fame is the design and lifestyle event, and really what's differentiate the differentiating factor between Philippines and the rest of its competition is the design, the creativity of Filipinos. And that's what we really want to emphasize with the buyers and the guests that come to Manila Fame. Right, okay. So it's sort of like a four-pronged event, right? You're going to have the uh, Manila Fame, Manila Now, together with uh, Cebu Next and Bijou Cebu, right? Yes. So maybe you can explain each of the components. Well, it's, um, it's a coming together of all the major trade events of the Philippines. So Manila Now and Cebu Next are primarily the, the furniture shows of the country. Cebu Bezu is the fashion accessories um, show. And Manila Fame is the houseware, gifts, and um, fashion accessories show also of the country. So what we're trying to do, we, well, we've started it last October. And then now for, for March, it's really um, under one roof so that um, we offer the buyers um, more of a, a holistic um, perspective of what the Philippines can offer the world. Right, and so for for buyers, it's it's fantastic. They just really just have to be at one place. Yes. Right. It's a it's a recognition that um, the budgets. I mean, travel budgets of a lot of our um, sourcing countries are basically um, limited, and coming together makes us buyer friendly. Um, it's an additional service. It's a service innovation of the export industry to cater to the realities of our um, of our international buyers. Right. Um, you know, especially at a time like this, exporters are, um, you know, probably a little bit challenged because of the recession in, in Europe and, and the United States, yeah. right? Yes, yes. Yeah. That's why we're, we want to um, be able to give the, the news that we can compete, and the best way to compete is through design innovation. Right. Okay. And another thing also that um, I understand you guys want to push um, as far as Filipino exports goes is um, spa and spa-based um, products and and services, right? Mm -hmm. We have um, a segment. Well, right now, under the banner of Manila Fame, it's part of the um, the gifts um, because it uh, the um, the swing of the buyers is really towards the gift market during this time. So um, the spa products is headlined under um, gift products. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. All right. So how many uh, exporters can we expect to join this expo this we year? We have um, about 236 um, exporters um, from all over the Philippines, all the way from north, um, mm -hmm. northern Philippines and all the way to, to Mindanao. And, um, well, we're expecting already um, figures have on pre-registered buyers were already 150% um, um, higher than last year's arrival. So we're very optimistic about um, the show this coming March. Right, and that's not even counting the, the walk-ins that you yes, expect to have yet, as well. Yet, yes. Right, okay. Um, what about the feedback that you often get from buyers? Um, what do they have to say about Manila fame and how it's evolved? Well, um, just this coming together of all the, the shows is definitely a welcome um, development for our buyers. They said they've been wanting for this, um, you know, for this to happen. Um, it makes it easier for them, especially now that there are big demands on, um, on their time and the efficiency by which they go around the world sourcing for products. So definitely, I mean, that's a plus for the Philippines. And, um, of course, they come to us really for the new innovation, the new product innovation. And then we're hoping, you know, just the addition of the, the fashion industry coming to Manila fame um, will be able to really um, give to them uh, an even bigger and better show for March. Right. And the foreign buyers are usually from um, which countries? Well, the biggest arrival that we have or the biggest market that we have is still the U.S., um, 
primarily because they are a traditional trading partner. But now um, there's also a shift that's going on. Um, normally, the, the EU would be our next um, market, but now um, countries like um, within Asia, like Korea, Australia, um, and even like you know our ASEAN neighbors, they're really picking up the um, I guess the slack in our traditional Western European. Um, country so good so there's always someone to buy Filipino goods yes right? <laughs> there's always someone okay um, some of the highlights um, that will be at the Manila fame uh, this year are the creation stations what are those well the creation stations are basically um, it's the foundation by which our um, our export industry was built on so this is really um, highlighting the crafts um, the craft tradition of the Philippines so what we're going to have really is um, we're highlighting um, the certain crafts that give again a new flavor or the artisanal flavor of um, of the Philippines. So we're having some beadwork, mat weaving, and um, wood shavings, um, the kind of creations that we use from those materials. Okay, so that should be exciting for everyone who's um, attending. Of course, a big aspect of uh, Manila fame this year is Manila Ware. Yeah. Okay, so JC, tell us more about that. And um, I understand it was Josie Natori who kind of spearheaded uh, this whole aspect of the expo, right? Mm -hmm. um, Manila Ware is, um, we're trying to promote the barefoot lifestyle. Um, it's resort wear. Um, um, we're using... Uh, indigenous materials with with um, with with um, staple fabrics like jersey and 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 the like and um, we're trying to to show what what we Pinoys are very good at we're we're very good in embroidery uh, hand painting um, beadwork and um, it's 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 those um, details that set, up, set us apart from the other designers. For sure. How many Pinoy designers will be part of Manila Wear? Uh, there will be 20. 20. 20. Oh. 10 are doing uh, apparel and then 10 are doing accessories. Okay, so you're doing apparel, doing obviously. Apparel. How did you feel when you were chosen as one of the 10 uh, fashion designers? Um, <laughs> uh, um, here in Manila, because we, we're... we're Known as uh, made to order, made to measure designers. Yes. We do couture. So now we're thinking out of the box and um, we're offering something else. Um, uh, something that's easy to wear. Um, right, something for a bigger market, hopefully, yes. right, eventually. Okay, so how many pieces was uh, each designer tasked to make? Uh, we're making five, five uh, each, and uh, we're presenting it on Manila night. On the 14th, um, uh, it's going to be a different Best kind night. of presentation, not the usual fashion show. It's a fashion installation that's going to be held at the SMDC Grand Showroom, oh, 14th okay. of March at 6 p.m. All right, so it's not going to be models down a catwalk. No, it's it's a surprise. Um, you it's know, a like surprise yes, presentation. Yes. You have to. We really that want to um, offer something different. I mean, again, could, because this is the the first step of what we hope is a long term relationship with the fashion design industry. Um, and so, like, we kind of wanna um, tread in a in a in an innovative um, way. Yeah, it's it's really exciting, you know, to draw attention to to Filipino fashion in general, but like as a designer, do the designers also want to um, bring in their own foreign clientele as well? Um, in, in, in the 80s, uh, the, the Japanese designers were very much in, in, in demand yeah. uh, with those uh, shapeless uh, dresses. Yes. And then in the right. 90s, it was uh, the Chinese influence, all the Chong Sams. Yes. And yeah. now uh, we feel that there's a, a demand for, for um, organic things, Definitely. organic, so organic fabrics like what we have. So we feel it's time for, it's, it's a time for us Filipino designers to shine and in the international market market yeah. Yeah. right I, I I agree completely so let's talk about your pieces um, you, you mentioned it's resort wear so what are the five uh, 
things that you made? Were they all dresses, all cover-ups, or a mixture of uh, everything? I, I did mostly cover-ups, uh, kaftans, uh, kimonos, um, things you'd put over your, your swimsuit, or... Right, but uh, in a very glam, haute couture kind of way, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay, what was it like uh, working under uh, Josie Natori? Of course, you had your design freedom, but mm -hmm. you did follow certain directions from her, am I right? Yes, uh, we were very happy that she was very generous in sharing her her her, her expertise in 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 this. Um, uh, she founded FDCP, which I currently had, and uh, I'm glad it, um, uh, we've brought attention to to indigenous fabrics and the like. Right, and you'll be doing that more later on um, this month during the expo. Now let's talk about the accessories here. So there's 10 fashion designers, there's also 10 accessory yes. designers. And um, okay, this piece is a Joyce Machitado, right? Yes. Yeah, we've had Joyce on the show. So this is the type of thing that she'll be exhibiting. Yes, um, a lot of them are really like coming from the inspiration of the Philippines and things that are made, I mean like, you know, like the graphic elements of like traditional Filipino um, culture. So um, that's basically their, their jump off point when they started to um, develop their collection. So um, Joyce was pretty much um, inspired by the culture down south in, in Mindanao. So she inputted that into, into her collection and her interpretation, reinterpretation of um, the, the culture from Mindanao. Yeah, very nice and very bold. Okay, mm -hmm. here in the middle, we have, who is that, the golden black? It's Joan Esco Bears. Um, if you notice, those are zipper heads. Yeah, I uh, would not have noticed if you didn't tell me, yeah. right? So he made them like really ornate and intricate, and it's like one of those necklace bib things, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice, very dramatic. And what about like the embellished uh, scarves we see here? This is also a necklace. Uh, it's by T.C. Alvarez. It's uh, made of distressed chiffon. And then it's uh, all beaded. Beaded by hand, mm -hmm. right? By really hand, very yeah. intricate stuff. Okay, so lots of uh, designers. We saw the the um, accessories designers flash there on the screen, but who are the other fashion designers aside from Jay-Z? Uh, joining me are Eno Soto, uh, Dennis Lustico, Vic Barba, Randy Ortiz, um, Raho, Raho. Raho Laurel, um, Joji Loren. Okay. All the, uh, all the big wigs. Oh, yeah. oh, there you go. And there you Cesar Galpo. Joey right. Samson. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. all, the, all the big guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be really exciting stuff. All right, guys, thank you. But Ria, please invite everyone to Manila Fame. Yes, we'd like to invite everyone to um, Manila Fame. It's um, 14th to the 17th of March. We're open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the evening. Um, so please do come. And um, of course, um, you know, like, Let's all support um, Philippine-made products. Wonderful. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks for thank coming you. on the show. All right, up next, we'll talk to a Manila Fame exhibitor. So keep it here. Shop Talk will be right back. Welcome back to Shop Talk. We're talking about the 55th Manila Fame, which is happening from March 14th to the 17th at the SMX Convention Center. And with us is in the segment is Rita Nazareno. She's director at SC Viscara, a bag and homeware company that's been around since, yes, 1925. Hi, Rita. Hi. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay, so SC Viscara is Segunda Cornejo. Se Segundina Cornejo Viscara, who's my grandmother. Fabulous. Okay, and... Was her her business started out as what exactly? Well, she started out hand embroid with hand embroidery of pinya, different trousseaus, linen for uh, Manila's elite, and, uh, and and that's how she started. So okay, and now uh, many many years for, later. many years <laughs> later, we had um, we had retail stores all over the world in the seventies and the eighties, and then when the crisis hit, we. Um, my mom transformed the company into a design and manufacturing company, and, and that's where we are now, and she just did an amazing job. So um, it's a third generation company. Right, okay, so now primarily you guys focus on woven goods, am I right? Yes, everything is hand woven. So with my law light, everything was handmade as well, so 
So we're, we're keeping that, that, that spirit alive. Right, that's like a natural uh, progression, yes. basically. Okay, so tell us about the, some of the stuff you have. You've brought some beautiful um, woven goods here. Yes, well, this is, um, these are all natural leather. This is from the Estevescar Limited line, and my dad uh, designed these. Um, uh, if you notice, they are, they are um, seamless, right. so they're very difficult to make. Some take about 8 to 10 days to make each one. We also have, uh, and for example, that Nana bag also, which is very popular. We also have the Zacharias line, which I named after my grandfather. Um, and I base it on contemporary art and architecture. For example, these are um, based on Donald Judd's artworks. Okay, so we're talking about the ones, the color block yes, ones on the floor exactly. over there. Yes, exactly. And right, um, we also have home accessories from the Estuscara line. And this uh, um, French market basket is one of them. So. Okay, so this is like a... A French market basket. So if you're doing market in France or the Philippines, yeah, it's perfect for Salcedo market. Yeah, for the for the weekend markets yes. or you know if you're gonna do um, the you know the food bazaar thing or something. That's great. So I'm sure this is the what year that you've been in Manila fame. Gosh, I don't even know because you know um, my parents also had been exhibiting for a long time. So. So probably since it's, before yeah. you, were, you were born, yeah. right? <laughs> but how, how important is um, Manila fame for exporters like yourself? Well, it's very important for us also because um, it, it really it, it shows a sense of community for us. And it also um, gives us a chance to show our products to, to buyers that only Manila fame can, can bring into the Philippines. Right. So who are so. most of um, your buyers? Well... Um, we have a big chunk of our uh, of our um, um, customers are from Japan. We also sell our our brand, our own brand in Japan, which is very different from other exporters. Because because our brand, because it is a heritage brand, is very strong. So um, so we have that. So we we sell in Japan. We also do have customers in the U.S. and and um, and Europe as well, nice. and Korea. Okay, and so. when you do that, um, are they sold under your brand? Or yes, they um, are? yes, most of them. Yes, we also have a private label company, but uh, not company, but a private label um, brand. But most of it is sold under our our own label, which is great. Wonderful. What What are the challenges being an exporter uh, these days when the European and U.S. market are you know just have slowed down? You know, there are a lot of challenges, but but for us, as long as we do very high quality, very um, progressive in terms of design. Um, I, you know, we always have a market because of, because of that, because of the design, because of the quality, the craftsmanship. So if you have those, then, then you know, you'll, you'll hopefully you'll, you'll have, float, yeah, you'll be yeah. in good shape, right? That's true. Okay, the Philippines uh, isn't really known, I mean, we're known for many things, but usually like leather goods isn't one of them. Yes. Like when you say leather goods, you'll think about uh, maybe Italy or maybe even Brazil, mm -hmm. but not so much the Philippines. How can we continue to make a name for ourselves in that area? Because, you know, people like you, companies like you make beautiful things. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for us, you know, as, as I said, as long as, as you're doing really quite innovative designs and, and craftsmanship and using g very good materials, then I think um, you have a great chance to be successful. And, um, and for example, for some of these bags, they're seamless, and it's very, very difficult to make. So, uh, you know, and, and that's one of our, of our signature um, aspects is, is, is uh, our, our seamless weaving. Right, and I'm sure buyers with a very discerning yes, eye can appreciate exactly. that. Right? Exactly. In terms of your design, how much does the market dictate what you create and how much is, you know, from what you just want to make yourself? Well, well, for us, you know, there's a certain part where we have to follow trends, but really we do the things that really excite us for me and my family and, 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 um, and our company. So, um, so basically, uh, you know, I'd want to say we're beyond trends. We, we do, whether it's very classic um, designs or, or more innovative designs, we, 
just want to enjoy ourselves and and do what what we want and what we like and and what we think people like. Right. And we also have you know because we have a workshop store right adjacent to our workshop, and we have people coming in and and uh, we have some bespoke. Um, uh, we can do bespoke um, things for them, so we do. Wonderful. Yeah, so it's so it's exciting. So we have, you know, if, if, if we have the chance and we have the time, we actually can sit down and and you know design a bag for for certain people. That's great. Really yeah. um, exciting. Because yeah. I, I was going to ask if you're available for the local market. Okay, we're running yes. out of time, but we'd like you to invite everyone to Manila Fame, especially to SC Viscara's booth. Yes, please come to Manila Fame. Um, the, it's the 55th uh, year of um, Manila Fame, and we're excited to be part of it. And please come to SC Viscara, the booth of SC Viscara, and also um, uh, visit all the other booths, whether in fashion or in home accessories or in furniture. It's really it's really amazing that the, the, the Filipino spirit in terms of craftsmanship and design that we have. So it's exciting. Amazing. Please come. And everybody can get a chance to see that. I believe the entrance fee is 500 pesos. I, I believe. Yes, that is what uh, Ria Matita <laughs> told me earlier. All right. Thank you so much, Ria. Thank you. All right. And thank you guys for watching Shop Talk. I'm Ria Tanwat Cotrillo. Follow ANC Shop Talk on Twitter and be a fan of ANC Shop Talk on Facebook. Join us again on Monday as we talk about dealing with difficult customers. Have a great weekend.